In this lecture, I'm going to review how to write an appropriate conclusion for my course. Now, different chemistry courses, different lab courses will ask different things. And in, in your past, you may have asked to do a couple of different ways or asked to do a couple of different ways to write your conclusions. I'm going to use some very basics that other professors and other teachers use. Um, and please pay particular attention because about 20% of your lab is based on your written conclusion. You may say written conclusion, yes. Writing is very important in science. Analytical writing is of essence to make sense of data and to communicate our findings. If you cannot write, you will not be an efficient person in science. Any case, the first and foremost thing, let's take a look at our first lab. Our first lab had some objectives. Now, of course, uh, research um, uh, documents will have hypothesis, but we had three objectives. Since we're not trying to uh, uh, find a, uh, a new thing in science, we're just going to verify some of the things we learned with this lab. But I look at my three objectives. That's the first thing. And the first thing I'm going to say to myself when I write a conclusion, did I satisfy all the things that I set out to do? And and if I did, of course, I'm going to write about that. Now, I don't want you to say, yes, we satisfied all our objectives. That's not appropriate. Neither is rewriting the objectives in your first part of your conclusion. That makes no sense. I already have the objectives. Don't rewrite them. So how do I do that? So the first part of your, your, um, your conclusion is to somehow tell me what you found that was so important to the lab. So the objectives were to, dimension, to measure the dimensions of four unknown objects and calculate the density. And of course, on your conclusion, I want to know what the density was for the four objects. So the, so the first part in the conclusion, tell me the density. I don't need you to say, hey, I measured the dimensions of the four unknown objects. Well, that's kind of understood if you have the density calculated. So you tell me in the first sentence, and no pros, no, it was a sunny day in lab today, and the wind was breezing through my hair. I'm not sure if I can say breezing through my hair, but don't say that. I want just the facts, Jack. So the first statement you should say is, the density of the four objects were. By telling me that, you have told me that you have satisfied the first objective. The second statement, and you can combine these any way you'd like, would be, Okay, the first rectangle was copper, the second rectangle was aluminum, so forth and so on. And you can combine that in the same sentence, I don't care. And of course, the third thing, determine the accuracy of results. Accuracy is how close you are to a known standard. Well, your percent error measures how accurate you are, not how precise you are, how close you are to a known standard, since that formula uses the known values that were given to you. And then the third statement or the third sentence, however you want to make this, if you combine these first two, and this is the second statement, it doesn't matter to me, but just the facts. The rectangle, the first rectangle had a percent error of 10%. The second rectangle had a percent error of 7%, so forth and so on. You're just telling me what you have. Now, you may say, Mr. Grotsky, this is pretty redundant because in the data tables, I have this. Yes, but what I am doing right now is asking you to write a very basic results section on top of your conclusion. So I want to know what did you find. So if we go down to our conclusion, maybe, and we go see what the conclusion is, the first thing I'm going to find is what did I find. All right, so what did you get? What did you find? It's based on your objectives we just talked about. Okay. The density of the first rectangle was, the density of the second rectangle was, the first rectangle was copper, the second rectangle was aluminum, so forth and so on. The first rectangle had a percent error of 10%. So the first part of your conclusion is nothing but the facts of what you got that was tied to your objectives. I do not want to hear I satisfied all my objectives. I do not want to hear that. I do not want you to rewrite the objectives. I want you to write. Uh, the density of the first rectangle was the um, first rectangle was copper and the percent error of copper was 10 percent you can do that for all the four objects however you'd like that but just the facts 
Okay, so that's, that's a 5 out of 10 so far. You have just satisfied by writing those important statements that is tied to the objectives, you have told me very clearly what you found. Okay, so the second part of the, and this is the most difficult part, okay, is you have to analyze your error. So this is going to be error analysis. Error analysis. And this is the hardest. The first part was telling me what you found, the most important pieces of information from your data. So you look at your data, you get the facts that were asked for in your objectives. And you write me complete sentences based on what you did to satisfy your objectives. I do not want you to say, I satisfy the objectives. I do not want you to say, everything was good. No, you need to tell me explicitly, okay, what did you find based on your objectives. Okay, the next part, error analysis. Here you're going to, number one, list the errors. There are errors in every measurement. There are errors in every lab. There are errors being a human. So I want to clearly state, do not give me measurement errors. I do not want to hear about measurement errors. I do not want to hear about human errors. I didn't know how to use the scale. It was windy out and the scale was moving. Okay, so do not add. This is inherent. We know that there's going to be measurement errors. Every device has a guess. We know that humans make errors. Yes. So what we're going to do is we're going to assume that we're very, what, careful. And we're also going to assume that we know how to measure. And we're going to eliminate that discussion. So I do not want to hear anything about these errors. What do I want to hear is I want to list errors. Okay? And I want at least two unique ones. Now, what are you talking about errors, Mr. Grotsky? What I'm saying is every study has, an, has a limitation, just like every measurement has. So I want to know, inherent in this study, in this laboratory, what was limiting factor. Is it possible that we could get 100% uh, 0 error? No, absolutely no error in this lab? No. No one had 0% error. This is not going to happen. Why? Not because of human error, not because of measurement error. There's got to be other things that limits this laboratory uh, um, activity. Okay? Now, not only do I want you to list them, this is important, I want you to explain how the error led to your result. To your result. I'm going to write this probably 50 times when I first grade these. You must tie your error to your outcome. What I mean by that? Well, if you've got a 10% error and it's positive, which means you're above, so this is the standard here that we know of, and if you're above that standard, your actual experimental value is above, I want to know why did that error go above or under. So I need you to tie your error. Let me give you an example. You can use it, but it won't be one of your unique ones. In this lab, okay, we had metals. Okay, and metals plus oxygen make corrosion. Now that corrosion is usually a salt, like iron plus oxygen, okay, will make iron oxide. Okay, I'll balance it for, your, for everybody here. But we're going to make iron oxide. So typically what could happen is the metals, if they corroded, they're rusting, could be heavier than what? The pure what? Metals were supposed to have. See, we're assuming 
that we have pure metals that we're measuring their densities. But if they have corrosion, they could be heavier. So that would lead you to have a higher mass with the same volume. Remember, density is mass over. That gives you what? A higher density. So my density is greater than the normal because my mass is heavy because I've added oxygens to the irons or the metals to make these have a larger density than normal. And that, you just listed an error and you explained it to me in detail. Okay, why that error was an error, but more importantly, you did what? You tied it to your outcome. All right, what's the outcome? My outcome is in the case that I'm giving you that if I've got a 10% error, a positive 10%, that means I'm 10% higher than the known value. Well, we assume they were metals, pure metals, right? Over time, pure metals corrode. And being above 10% means what? Being above 10% means that we have to be heavier in density equals mass over volume. So I'm listing an error, and I'm explaining it, and I'm tying it to my outcome. Now, if my error was minus 10%, and I was below that value, that would mean that I could not use this error. See, I need to use errors that explain the outcomes I actually got. Not just list them on. That would be for sixth grade. Now I want you to list the errors and explain those errors and tie them to your outcome so that we could maybe build on this lab to eliminate this error next time. See, in research labs, you look at the conclusions in the error analysis and you look to limit that error for another study next time. So you can use this error but you better give me two more because I want two unique errors. And again, you're using your own words. You're doing this yourself. You can talk to each other about ideas, but you have to phrase these things your own. Okay, plagiarism. I'm not even going to deal with it. I'm going to bring it right downstairs. And I read these people. This is 20% of your lab. So the first five points, tell me what you got based on your objectives. Okay, second part, error analysis. List your errors, explain them how they led to the outcome. Just say, well, don't just say in this case, well, it got heavier because of iron oxide. Great, but how did getting heavier support your error analysis? Getting heavier, adding the oxygen meant that your mass was heavier that drove your density higher. List your errors, okay? Explain in detail how that error led to your outcome. Do not list an error that has nothing to do with your lab. Don't explain an error that makes you below if you're above. You know, and there's many ways to think about this. Is there one of the objects in your lab that had more percent error than others? Is there one with less? Talk about the reasoning you think. You may not be right here. It's conjecture. You would need another laboratory study to figure that out. Okay? Now, if you're still confused, okay, there's another place to look for more information on how to write a lab. So looking for more information on how to write a lab conclusion based on my standards, this is 20% of the lab, let's go to lab conclusions. And going to lab conclusions, possibly sometime today, I list all the things that I just said, and if you are not a good auditory, want to read this, you can actually read all laboratory reports, what I actually want, looking for significant figures, okay, make sure that you have measured appropriately with a great, the correct level of precision. If an object shows something uh, calibrated to the tenths, you're measuring to the hundredths place, okay, so these are all the important components of your lab that I'm looking to grade. Look at my song. Uh, I'll tell you, neatness is rewarded, sloppiness is penalized. If I can't read it, man, I don't know what it is. I'm just going to mark it wrong. I don't have time to tell you to present me something appropriate. It's time to grow up. This is my song. If I can't read it, it's wrong. If I can't see it, it's wrong, meaning if you wrote it there, but I can't see what you're saying. If I can see it but can't read it, it's wrong. Sloppiness. If I can read it but can't see it, it's wrong, meaning if you're just writing random words and I can read it but has nothing to do with this lab, then... Guess what? It's just going to be wrong, okay? This is my song by Mr. Grotsky, a member of the Tall Poet Society specializing in a short poem. But 
If you're looking for more information, okay, although this didn't uh, work here for me. All right, so back to my laboratory page, a little problem there. Okay, if you look at the lab conclusions, I explicitly write exactly what I like to see and all the rubric there. And if you look, I also give you an example. Francesco was in my class a couple of years back, now at Boston University, I believe. And now um, this is an example of his conclusion or his lab write-up. Okay, I'm just giving you the conclusion. And here's an example of an appropriate conclusion. Okay, this first part was nothing more than the facts. What did he find based on his objectives? And the next part was his error analysis. So something to give you an example of what I'm looking for. Okay, and again, this is a 20-point part of your overall uh, lab. So good luck.